Nilo Vidal, hola, and thank you for joining me on this week's Challenger Chats. You have a world ranking of 237, which is also your highest world ranking. You're based in Salou, but you've just finished a training session in Barcelona, which is a whopping 240 kilometers round trip from your home in Salou. I've been really looking forward to this all week. How are you? Hello, Lisa. How are you? Thank you. First of all, thank you for having me here. Um, yeah, it, it's, well, a few days, few days per week, normally two, I, I come to Barcelona for training because I am alone in my club in Salo. So yeah, today one, was one of these days to Barcelona Global Squash Academy. I train here. Excellent. To kick us off, I want to do an exchange of facts about you. So I'm going to tell you three things that I already know about you. And in return, I want you to tell me three things that maybe I wouldn't know about you. I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> so number one, I've got Highway to Hell is one of your favorite songs and you listen to it most days. Number two, you're very close with Belgian PSA player Tine Gillis. Yes. And number three, you're currently doing a degree in multimedia, but also training in cybersecurity too. Exactly. You know, you know a lot about me. <laughs> I did well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love the highway to hell stuff. I, I like, you know, these things. I like it. So I tell three things you might not know about me. Well, first thing um, maybe is that you might not know that I cry watching Lion King. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, a, that's the first thing. The second thing uh, you don't know, but maybe you will know in the future, is that I like, I love to send a lot of voicemails in WhatsApp. Okay, that's uh, people, it's annoyed about me. And the third thing is about when I play squash. I like, for example, I just, I, I am just coming from my club in Barcelona and I like to play in a court, which is very far away from us but it's ready for to have a big crowd you know and i like to play there and my coach was like nilo but you are the only one that likes to play there you know it's far away and i was like yeah but i have crowd there you know so that's another thing you like the fans yeah i like i like <laughs> let's go back to the studies multimedia and cyber security what is it about these subjects that interests you yeah, uh, I mean, it, it is informatics, actually. It is like informatic engineering, but forgive my Spanglish, yeah? uh, but it's not that technical. Like, uh, like I have technical stuff like web development, app development and all of this, but also I have more graphical stuff like photo edit, video edit, all of this. But I am, yeah, after... Uh, around the years, you know, I have decided to more for the technical stuff and yeah, in the future for the cybersecurity stuff, like the master and stuff. So. How did that come about? Those two subjects are typically not something that we would get introduced to in the UK. Is it something in Spain that you do at school? Like, sorry? Do you do it at, in school? Like, yeah, yeah, but the question, please, sorry. Typically, um, we wouldn't be, we wouldn't see these subjects in school in ah, in the UK. Okay, yeah. So, how did you come about to get yeah. to? Know? If, I mean, firstly, I I was gonna do biochemistry, okay, but it was impossible with with squash. That that's the first thing uh, because yeah, I had or to quit squash because of I was not it was not possible to assist to laboratory, okay. So that's why I decided to take that grade because I always like to take. To, to look at uh, computer magazines and stuff. And then I love that. So uh, typical subjects are maybe the cybersecurity su subjects because they are coming also from American schools and another kind of schools that are more uh, advanced in that, in that way, you know? So that's maybe the kind of su subjects you, you might not see often in other, in other countries. Not only do you study, you train and you compete full time and you also coach. How do you juggle all of this? It's so crazy. It's so crazy and 
a lot of people always ask me and also juniors like Milo, my dad wants me to study and I don't want and how you do all of this, you know, it's it's super hard. Like, for example, today I went to sleep at five in the morning uh, because of studies. Yeah. And at 11, I was training in Barcelona, 120 kilometers away with Iker Pajares, you know, uh, of course, that's not professional. That's not professional, and sometimes I regret this on the tournaments, but it's the only way. So what keeps me motivated to, to do that is that when, when summer arrives and I look back to everything that I have, I have done during the year, I feel so proud of myself. It's like, it's so hard the day to day, but June arrives and it's like, wow, you are the boss. You, you passed another year of university, you grow on the PSA World Tour, you played Bundesliga, you played other leagues, you coach. So that was, that, that's the thing that keeps me motivated, yeah, to keep going. It's really great that you recognize, you know, you take the time to be proud within yourself because it sounds like you do take on a lot. Is studying and playing on the PSA World Tour something that you would advise to kids growing up now? Yeah, definitely, definitely. But... I mean, it, it brings you, like, for example, I miss a lot juniors stuff, you know, because, uh, yeah, I think, I think it is so, it was just one of the best seasons of my life, no? But professional stuff, professional BSA, you know, uh, brings you things, brings you another kind of things, you know? But also, when you, when you decide, you know it very well, I guess, when you decide to be professional, you must be a professional, you know, like, for example, there are a lot of friends or staff that got the license, but they are not professional in the day to day. They, they eat chips. They, you know, they don't have a professional lifestyle, which is OK, of course. But if you want to do it well, you know, you need to be professional. Definitely. You but I advise the kids no, to, to play, but they must know what they what they will do. You know, that's what I mean. A couple of minutes ago, you mentioned that because you are studying, it resulted in you going to bed at five o'clock, which isn't professional. And there are certain things that aren't professional with studying and playing. Would you agree if you prioritize the right things and you're clever with your time management, then you can be the best student and also a really good professional as well? Yeah, I agree. Like. Yeah, like for example, I have a, a lot of discussions uh, with my mom about that. She gets very angry, you know, when, but the thing is, uh, when you do all of these things, I, I don't see many people doing that much, you know, uh, with respect to everyone, of course, but uh, it's like, for example, now when I go home later, uh, I need to play with the phone one hour because, you know, I have been studying, I have been training, I, I didn't sleep, you know, I need that time, you know, it's, yeah, so, I need that unprofessional time sometimes because otherwise you get crazy. That's what, what I, but yeah, I think good manage always gives you more time for sure. How has the global pandemic affected your studies? Well, for example, now I, 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 the, I have done the exams uh, virtually, like I guess a lot of people did. Um, normally I study, 80% of the grade online. So it didn't affect me at all with that, but it affected me for the exams. But anyway, I, I really improved my marks. Like normally as I am doing all that stuff, I can't, uh, I can't manage to, to get an A grade, you know, because I am not like studying 12 hours per day. Uh, but now with the pandemic, I was so productive. I was like, Training, study, and reading books at home, you know, and then I, I, I don't know, I just got better marks. So it was good for me, actually. Now, when you were 17, your father passed away, mm -hmm. which must have been extremely hard. How did that impact you? Well, it, it, it was definitely the, the worst thing that happened in my life, no? So the impact was so big. Um... But I got stronger. I definitely got stronger. Um, 
like for example, the year before when when he was having the cancer and he was at the hospital and that stuff, that year was terrible. Was my worst in in the sports side, uh, the competitions, everything was so bad. But for example, the year later. Uh, it made me stronger. It was super sad, uh, but I was so lucky uh, to to have the people I have around, starting for for my mom and my family, of course. But also, like for example, you say the name Tina Hillis, no? She also had a, a big loss, uh, but I was, I, I am so lucky and I feel so proud to have these people around me. So that was that made me the way a bit easier, you know. But of course, I still didn't overcome that. But I, you have to, you have two ways, you know. You can just give up and, you know, and go to the bad life, or you can stand up and and go harder. And that's what I did. And I, I was definitely stronger after that. I started to play better. I got quite good results in my last junior year, and yeah, that's the thing. So was squash a bit of an emotional release for you during that time? What sorry? Was squash like an emotional release for you during that time? Yeah, I mean, the, the day after my father died, uh, I, w- I woke up and I went straight to the, to, the, to the court. And for example, my grandma, which is very modern, okay, but still, you know, it's older than us. Uh, she was like, what are you doing? Oh, your father died. Uh, what, what are you doing? You must stay like here and sad, you know? And I was like... Yeah, I am so sad, you know, but squash is my medicine. Uh, I compete in squash. For me, I take squash professionally, but it's also my medicine. And it was helping a lot, a lot. Uh, Doing solo at my club, hitting the ball, it helped a lot. The best medicine you can have. Yeah. You mentioned that you had some of your best results following those events. Why do you think that was? If... For example, uh, I had in my last junior year the runner-up of the Europeans with my team, with my Spanish team. I was the number one of the team or my German junior open runner-up also. Uh, When my father died, I I was pushing every day, telling myself like, hey, you you must make your dreams true, you know, you must push harder than ever. He's watching you, you must make him proud, you know. And yeah, I was more solo than ever. I was doing morning, afternoon, solo, solo, solo. People get bored of solo, but I was not. I was like super focused, focus, focus. And yeah, when the tournaments came, I was just stronger than before. So the results came up. You mentioned your mom. You're very close with your mom. Would that be right? Did yeah, yeah, that change? Did your father passing away change the relationship between you two? Did you become closer? Yeah, definitely. I mean, we we were we were close, of course, because his mom and son, no. But we are more closer. We are more also like like friends and stuff. Like for example, I don't know if I should say that here because for the kids, but let's say it. Uh, for example, there is the eighties party in the disco near my home, like two times per year, you know? And for example, I get her there. So for example, to that, to that party, instead of telling my friends, I am like, mama, let's go to the disco. And maybe you see us at 4 a.m. if there are no tournaments, of course, otherwise I don't go. At 4 a.m., my mom with 57 years old and me like, wow, the highway to hell. So yeah, we are closer, of course. Yeah. yeah. Maybe maybe I could get an invite to one of these 80s parties one day. Of course, you are so invited. <laughs> your mum is a fitness coach. How much of an impact has mm-hmm. she had on your training and your squash? A lot, a lot. I, I was actually, actually speaking now with, with a training mate about that. Uh, well, for me, of course, she is the best fitness coach. Uh, she is very good, actually, and very recognized in, in Spain because of she was also giving courses also to teachers, to fitness teachers, uh, fitness coaches and stuff. So she, she is a, a reputation girl no, in the fitness world. Uh, so for me, I, I mean, uh, a lot of people, I, I, 
want to be humble, but it's true that a lot of people always speaks about my physical, like always. Uh, one thing, I, I prefer they speak about my mix or another stuff, but no, they speak about my physical, my physical condition. So I guess she is doing right. Yeah. Who's fitter then, you or your mom? Definitely she. She was competing also in trampoline. It's called like, you know, with the loopings and stuff. She was very, very good in the world. I hope someday to, uh, I can get some result like her, yeah. Can you give me three words that your mum would use to describe you? Ooh, bad things, <laughs> it's a joke. I, happy, like I am a happy guy. Intelligent, I think. It doesn't sound hum humble, but yeah, I think, yeah. And how is the name? Like Tenacity, it's called in English. Tenacious. Tenacious. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Spanish. Yeah, that's the three words, I think. She, she, sometimes we get angry, you know, to each other and after, but when she, when she's with, with her friends and she thinks I don't listen, she's like, oh, my son is, is working hard and it's good, it's good. <laughs> but she doesn't tell me. <laughs> Let's go back to squash. You had a very successful junior career. You were the Spanish number one. You won a lot of titles, but you're yet to do so on the PSA tour. How was that step up from juniors to seniors? That it was amazing, I guess, for, for you too or for everyone, no? Um, I was used, yeah, as you say, no? I was used to... to yeah, for example, in my country, I was used to, to be the number one and stuff. After uh, many times, Sergio Garcia, my biggest opponent no, there, uh, beat me. But well, for many years, I was the number one. And the thing is, when I start to play PSA, uh, people know me as a humble guy. So I will never say to someone or stuff a um, bad thing, you know, or stuff. But I was thinking, for example, in my first PSA in France against an Egyptian player. I was like, no one knows him. I will win because I am the Spanish number one. And I got chopped. Three love easy in 15 minutes. And I had a terrible travel. Uh, I was the Spanish number one and I lost in 15 minutes against a no rank player, which plays very good. And I was like, oof. And that was my welcome to the PSA. And that was during one year. So the the jam was so big no but it didn't put you off you kept going yeah yeah of course but then i realized uh, i i start to understand things like for example i am called mr bose people calls me mr bose i love to do bows. and the thing is a lot of my coach victor montserrat and staff was telling me a lot of times you know you do too many bows. please stop this is not good when you play against a good player and you know in juniors it was like Victor, it's working. But then in PSA, it was, you know it very well. I played maybe a not that good boss, and then a very fast player goes and plays a perfect drop shot. And I was like, oh. So then I got chopped, literally. So yeah, that's the thing. So what adaptions then would you say you have to make from juniors to seniors, other than obviously getting better? Yeah, the, I, I think the most important thing is the is the professional lifestyle, as I said. Like there are a lot of talented people or staff, but uh, maybe they they do good results sometimes. But if you are not professional in your lifestyle, for sure, I mean, I don't think you you will get success on the PSA World Tour. Of course, in another things, yes, and everything is with respect, no, but. The professional lifestyle, I think, is the best thing, you know? And what is professional to you? What does it look like? Like, for example, I don't know, uh, starting at home with what you eat, for example, resting, I think, resting, what you eat, the time managing also. And, for example, very important also for the kids, if they listen, <laughs> uh, the warm-up and the cool-down. It is very important. Um, I, I see a lot of times, and probably everyone does it, uh, people also amateur, or maybe not amateur too, they, they also warm up and do cool down. But I see also a lot of PSA players that after two hours match, one, one hour 30 match, you know, 
they take the bag and they go to the hotel and they don't have the cool down, no? And I am shocked about that, actually. I, I mean, if you are professional, I think, no? Uh, you must have these things on mind. Otherwise, injuries and stuff come, no? Okay, just to round off, what two attributes do you believe you must have to be the best in the world? Perseverance. Love, because I think you must love. Uh, you must love this. You must love what you do. And please help me again. Tenacious? How was? Tenacious. Tenacious. Okay, perfect. <laughs> I won't forget that. I, th I would say these three. Excellent. Is there anything in particular you're looking forward to in 2021? Well, I, I definitely hope for, for me and for everyone, uh, this pandemic gets better. I don't think it will completely finish because I think there must be a big step still then, but at least to have a better life no? for everyone, for, our, for us as a, athletes, no? and also for non-athlete people, you know? Well, Nilo, thank you very much for being so open and honest and sharing your stories with us. I've had a great time getting to know you and good luck for this year. Thank you very much, Lisa and uh, PSA team. Good luck thank for you, you too.